in this morning's Saturday session, Margot Price. Rolling Stone says her record is one of the most anticipated country albums of the year. She's already been compared to the greats Loretta Lynn and Tammy Wynette, but as she told us recently at Skinny Dennis, a honky talk bar she loves in Brooklyn, her road to success has been neither short nor smooth. Since you put me down, I've been drinking just to drown. Margot Price worked a lot of odd jobs while she was trying to break through. You installed aluminum siding, is that right? Yeah, I did siding, roofing, I taught uh, dance lessons, mm -hmm. ballet and tap. Do you consider adding tap to the act? <laughs> yeah, I actually tapped on one record a long time ago. <laughs> did you? <laughs> For more than a decade, the 32-year-old singer tried to get noticed in Nashville. A decade's a long time. It is. So how do you... How do you keep your eye on the prize, so to speak? I think I just, I really wanted it. And I think that I knew that was what I was meant to do. Like the title of her new album, Price is a Midwest farmer's daughter who grew up in Buffalo Prairie, Illinois. Her mother drove her across the border to Iowa for singing lessons. I used to sing at all the football games and basketball games. I'd do the national anthem. Did some hockey games too, I read, yeah? Yeah, I did a hockey game. <laughs> it was actually at a big, uh, it was a place called The Mark in the Quad Cities. It was like two or 3,000 people. I think I was about 15 years old. Uh -huh. Walked out on the ice in some high heels, <laughs> sang the national anthem. <laughs> at 20, she dropped out of college and moved to Nashville. Your songs depict a, a, a pretty hard life. I just have happened to wear my heart on my sleeve a little bit, and so people know <laughs> all the bad things that's happened to me. I put hurting on the bottle. She writes about bouts with the bottle, a short stint in jail, and losing one of her twin sons two weeks after he was born in 2010 to a rare heart condition. But my firstborn died, and I cried out to God. Was that a hard choice to put that in your music? Yeah, it was, you know, um, but it, it just seemed like something I had to talk about because if not, it was always just something that was kind of there and, mm -hmm. and, uh, you don't want to hide that. Yeah. I think it's healthy to get it out. I, I did try for quite a while to hide it and, and I, you know, I didn't talk about it very much because I couldn't hold myself together. But none of that can cure you when you're desperate and depressed. To make the record, you had to pawn your wedding ring? Sold my wedding ring, <laughs> sold a bunch of music gear, um, and then my husband sold the car. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of were betting the whole farm on yeah, this one. <laughs> yeah, we were. And I, I kept telling him, I said, you know, we really, we need to hold on to that. I, I think that's not a very wise decision. The and, car uh, or the, the ring? Car. <laughs> the car. The ring I was a little sentimental about. I but, imagine. Uh, but her husband and guitarist, Jeremy Ivey, insisted. He said he'd, he'd sell the house if he had to. Mm -hmm. and that was how much he believed in me, and it was a good reason to keep going. <laughs> That's pretty cool to hear. Yeah. Except it that you might lose the house. Yeah, except the house, and we'll need, we're going to need somewhere to live. <laughs> At first, it looked like the bet might not pay off when one record label sent her a rejection email. That day was a really hard day. Mm -hmm. I actually think I went to the liquor store, like, three, four o'clock and got a bottle of tequila and didn't stop till it was gone. But then I realized that's no way to take failure. You just have to brush yourself off and keep going. Yeah. And so. <laughs> Although it's awfully tempting. <laughs> yeah, it helped. And I didn't even, it was funny when I woke up the next morning, I was like, I'm not even as hungover as I should be. <laughs> What's wrong? Then her luck finally turned. When Jack White's Third Man Records signed Price, she was able to get her wedding ring out of hock, and now sometimes she notices her old car on the street. I think like when we pulled in to play the Opry the other day, like we parked next to the same make and model of, you know, it was just a... Well, the car that you sold? Yeah. <laughs> what did it you think? It makes me smile, you know. <laughs> <laughs> makes me think we made the right choice. We still haven't bought another car though.